Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dan Carey, Virginia Secretary of Health and Human Resources. Thank you all for being here. I look around the room and see a, a great number of our community partners, community partners behind us. Thank you for being here uh, for today's uh, press conference. Uh, we're here to give you updates on what we in Virginia are doing to plan and prepare for COVID-19, coronavirus, here in Virginia. Coming up, you'll hear from our state health commissioner, Dr. Norm Oliver, and our state epidemiologist, Dr. Lillian Peek. But first, it is my pleasure to introduce another physician, the 73rd governor of Virginia, Ralph Northam. Thank you, Thank you. Governor. Well, good morning, and thanks to all of you for being here this morning. We are here today, as our Secretary said, to update you on the Commonwealth's actions and plans around the coronavirus, COVID-19. My top priority is to keep Virginians safe and also to keep you informed with up-to-date and accurate information. I want to assure Virginians that we are actively monitoring this new disease and its spread. To date, there have been no positive cases of coronavirus in Virginia. But if and when it appears in Virginia, we are prepared. We began our planning in January, within days after scientists first identified the virus, by establishing an incident management team of public health and safety experts. I have full faith in the experience and leadership we have at the Virginia Department of Health. Our state epidemiologist, Dr. Lillian Peek, and our Commissioner of Health, Dr. Norm Oliver, both have deep experience in public health. In just a bit, you will be hearing from our Secretary of Finance, Aubrey Lane, Dr. Peek, and Dr. Oliver. Dr. Peek, who is leading our incident management team now, was the health director in the Thomas Jefferson Health District during the H1N1 flu outbreak. This team's job is to coordinate and plan Virginia's response. It includes people from across state government, including the Department of Health, the Department of Emergency Management, and numerous other agencies. The team meets daily to share information, and they are in regular communication with our partners in government and the private sector. We're working to make sure that our health providers and communities around the state are prepared. This includes our first responders, our hospitals, our local health districts, and health care providers. Our public health lab, the Division of Consolidated Laboratory Services, will do its own testing of potential coronavirus cases, which means we no longer have to wait for test results from the CDC in Atlanta. We can get results and respond much faster when we do it right here in Virginia. I have received regular briefings since the beginning of the year, and this has been a standing agenda item at our weekly cabinet meetings. Our team has briefed members of the General Assembly and I have spoken with General Assembly leaders about the importance of having the necessary supplies in place. We all agree that Virginia will have the resources we need to respond. The Commonwealth is taking this public health issue seriously, and Virginians should too. You need to know this. Our Department of Health has some of the country's leading public health experts, and they are on the case. As governor and as a physician, I have great confidence in their expertise. In fact, National Health Policy Organization Trust for America's Health just released its annual public emergency preparedness report. Virginia ranked in the high performance tier as we have for the past several years of that report. In particular, we scored highly for emergency manage management accreditation, hospital safety, and for our public health lab testing capacity. I'm proud of this ranking 
from a respected, non-political national health organization, and it underscores the faith that Virginians can have in our public health system and its leadership. It's also important to know there are some simple actions you can take to protect yourself. They're the same things that you should do every day. Wash your hands with soap and water. Cover your mouth and nose when you sneeze. Stay home if you feel sick and avoid touching your face. Lastly, I want to acknowledge that a lot, let me repeat that, that a lot of misinformation is out there about the coronavirus and its impacts. I would discourage everyone from spreading rumors or misinformation. You can always get accurate, reliable information at the Virginia Department of Health website or the CDC website. And these numbers and websites are on these posters to my left and right. Both of these health organizations will update those sites regularly so you can be sure of having the most up-to-date, accurate information. Coronavirus is serious, and we are taking it seriously. We have a plan, we are executing it, and we are prepared. Our team will continue to closely monitor developments and keep the public informed as needed. With that, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. I'd like to thank the media for uh, making sure that our community, our, our Commonwealth, receives this message. And I would like to turn this over uh, now to Secretary Aubrey Lane, who will review the resources that we have available in the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, to handle this virus. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, obviously, today is really about uh, the governor's efforts working with his team to confront um, the situation. But as he mentioned, it's going to take some resources. The shorter answer is the governor and, their, and his team has all the resources uh, available to him to be able to do this effectively uh, and efficiently uh, over the short period of time and over whatever this course takes us over the next year or so, depending on how things uh, materialize. In the next 90 days, as you might imagine, the team has already been working hard. This has been going on some efforts, but it was determined we're going to need about $3.6 million over the next 90 days to mobilize efforts, and a big part of that has to do with the personal protection equipment that would be necessary to provide for all our health workers and all the people responding, in addition to communication materials that will be going out uh, to the public. Uh, along with the actual cost of all the people here working. So uh, that money has already uh, been available to the governor under his current authority. We have been in direct communication with the money committees and the, the senior leadership of the legislature, and they agree with this, and that we have monies on hand that the governor is able to uh, tap to make sure those uh, resources are currently available. Uh, if this develops in the future, uh, the way we've been briefed, and you'll hear more about that in a few minutes, over the next 12 months, over and above that, there could be a potential for another $6.5 million that may be necessary in direct cost, again, for the personal protection equipment, the communication materials, the other items that will be available at the uh, disposal to meet uh, this particular uh, issue as we work forward. So um, as it's a fluid situation. It continues, and I just would uh, uh, assure the audience here that whatever resources are needed will be made available. Uh, obviously, this is something that uh, the legislature is working hand in hand with the uh, governor's executive team. Um, so anyway, thank you very much. And Governor, I'll turn it back over. Thank to you. Thank you. Dr. Oliver. Good morning. My name is uh, Norm Oliver. I'm the State Health Commissioner. And I'd like to uh, make a few comments before introducing Dr. Lillian uh, Peake. As you all know, the Centers for Disease uh, Control and Prevention, the CDC, suggests that the current global uh, circumstances around the novel coronavirus and the illness that it causes, COVID-19, is likely that this will uh, lead to widespread uh, evidence of this disease across uh, the globe. And efforts 
here in this country should really be focused on both containing the spread of that disease and mitigating the impact of this virus. As of today, there is no one in Virginia who has tested positive for COVID-19. The Virginia Department of Health is preparing, however, for the potential of community spread of this virus, although we, as I said, currently have no one who has tested positive for it. This virus is a serious public health threat, and our department has been working very closely with local, state, and federal government partners, as well as health care and emergency management partners to respond to this threat. The Department of uh, Health has led a very robust, uh, comprehensive uh, influenza preparedness campaign since 2004. We successfully responded to the uh, H1N1 pandemic in 2009 and 2010, and that work serves as a very solid foundation for responding to this current event. COVID-19 is a respiratory disease that seems to be spreading much like flu, and the Virginia Department of Health is adjusting our pandemic flu plans from earlier for this new uh, disease. As I said, we're working closely with our state and local government uh, partners, with first responders, with healthcare providers, community partners, and others to prepare for and respond to any community spread, and we are ready to respond. I'd like to introduce Dr. Lillian Peake. She is the state epidemiologist at the Virginia Department of Health and is uh, directing our incident management of uh, this um, disease. Lillian. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So the outbreak began in China, but is now shifting to South Korea, Iran, and Italy. As of yesterday, 12 U.S. states had identified cases, and the state of Washington is investigating some clusters of cases. But no cases have been identified in Virginia at this time. As of this morning, 17 Virginians had been tested for the virus, 14 did not have the virus, and results are still pending on three tests. We expect to see more cases in the United States in the upcoming weeks, but taking strong public health measures now may blunt the impact of the virus in the United States. Most people with the illness have fever and cough, and some develop pneumonia and other symptoms. So far, most people have had mild illness. People who are older or who have chronic health conditions are at more risk for more severe disease. People who do get sick with the virus develop symptoms within 14 days of being exposed to an infectious person, and mostly adults have been affected by this virus. At this time, there isn't a specific vaccine or treatment, but people with severe disease receive other types of care and treatments at the hospital. The federal government is actively researching and developing a vaccine and specific medicines. Until there's a vaccine, the key strategy to preventing the spread is keeping sick people separate from people who are not sick. Local health departments across the state are working very closely with doctors so we can quickly identify anyone who has the novel coronavirus. We work with our healthcare partners to track many types of infectious diseases every day. And we have very good systems in place to do this. We work with the state lab to have people tested if they're sick and meet that exposure criteria. We have a validated, effective test now in Virginia at our state lab. So the immediate risk for most people in the United States is low. The greatest risk is among people who are in close contact with someone who is sick with the virus. Virginia is not an area where the virus is spreading in the community right now, so the risk right now is low. CDC is issuing travel alerts for places where the risk is increased. The information is on their website, and this is a dynamic situation, so it does change. 
people who travel from places with what the CDC calls a level two or level three alert should stay home for 14 days after returning from those countries. We've been monitoring travelers returning from China for the past month. Local health departments are working with their community partners to prepare in case we do have community spread sometime in the future. There are things that you can do to protect yourself and others. Regularly check the VDH website. We update it daily. The situation is changing and we are keeping up to date, accurate information and guidance on our website. The virus mainly spreads through close contact with a person who's sick with the virus. Washing your hands and avoiding touching your face helps prevent the spread of germs. So be sure to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and use hand sanitizer if soap and water aren't available. When you're sick, it's important to stay home. Cover your coughs and sneezes with the tissue and throw it away. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces and objects. The CDC recommends now that travelers avoid all non-essential travel to China, Iran, Italy, and South Korea. Individuals who are older or who have chronic medical conditions should consider postponing non-essential travel to Japan. If you traveled to a country where the virus is spreading, stay home for 14 days when you return. Finally, influenza is still spreading in Virginia. It's not too late to get a flu vaccine, and right now you have more risk of getting the flu than the novel coronavirus in Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pete. We'll be glad to accept questions. Sarah, we'll start with you. Yes. Yes. Um, could you share more with us about the diagnostic, you know, diagnostic tests in a state that's proposing um, undertaking? Does that rely on the kits coming to the CDC? And how many people will look at those tests? Thank you for the question. I'm going to allow Dr. Peake to answer that. Good morning. Um, I'm Dr. Denise Tony. I'm the lab director of the Division of Consolidated Laboratory Services. Um, in answer to your question, we are using the test kits that were released from the Centers for Disease Control. Um, currently, we have two test kits in house, and each test kit can test approximately 50 to 60 individuals. Um, depending on the number of specimens that are submitted per, per patient um, dictates how many tests we can get out of an individual kit. And then also we have to perform verifications and validations on those test kits. So that also um, impacts the number of tests that we can perform out of those test kits. We are constantly monitoring the number of tests and have already placed additional orders to maintain a capacity to perform more tests. I do not. The only thing that I do know is that we only have the ability to order one test kit at a time. And so as soon as we receive our one kit, we are immediately placing our order for the next test kit. Patrick. Still there are some have suggested that the threat from coronavirus has been overstated. Do you believe that the, the threat has been overstated? And as a health professional, how would you characterize I don't believe it's been overstated. As I said, you know, we are taking this seriously, and I, I just want Virginians to know that uh, we are doing everything that we can to prepare for whatever scenario uh, occurs. Uh, this is, as was mentioned earlier, it's a, a fluid situation. We meet every day. We look at uh, what's going on around the world uh, every day, and, and we're prepared to act on that. But it's, uh, you know, anything like this uh, that has the potential to spread, uh, is something that we take seriously, and uh, we've had this happen in the past, as has been mentioned with H1N1 uh, and other pandemics, and uh, we have experience uh, in those areas, and, and we're doing everything that we can to prepare uh, and keep Virginians safe. And, and I think the other thing that's important to, to reiterate, there are going to be a lot of questions that we perhaps may not answer today, uh, and I just encourage people to, you know, to go onto the website, uh, to, to call the, the toll-free number uh, in these uh, 
questions will be addressed, and, and they will be addressed with, with accurate information. I'm going to, it's a, I, as you know, I am a physician, but I'm going to play my role as governor today, so I'm going to let <laughs> Dr. Peake answer that question. So, thank you. So we have been working very closely with health care providers. They're in touch with the local health department if they have someone who they think could have the infection. And so we would be working with them from the beginning. The person would be treated wherever that's appropriate, either in the hospital or whatever facility is most appropriate in a, a doctor's office. And we would be working to make sure that the person does stay separate from others so that they can't spread the virus to others. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that just to emphasize the fact that we're not there yet um, and that there are no cases and we're not at, at the point where we need to be dealing with that. But we are uh, developing plans in, for all kinds of scenarios, including that kind of scenario, uh, and we'll deal with that when um, and we'll be prepared should that actually um, develop. As far as speaking about state of emergency, that's uh, out of my wheelhouse. I'll let the uh, uh, governor address that. <laughs> as, as was mentioned, we, we do have the resources available uh, to date, um, and it has not been necessary to declare a state of emergency. Uh, as Dr. Oliver and others have said, this is a, a fluid situation, uh, and should that uh, need arise, uh, we will you know, make that decision. Well, again, to date, uh, we have not had any uh, cases in, in Virginia. Uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but if, if, uh, if we do, uh, if things change, then, then we will uh, make decisions and, and certainly make announcements regarding travel. I think we can always learn from, from others' experience, but if, I don't know if you wanted to say anything in addition to that. Just that we are in touch um, and coordinating every day with CDC, with other states. We are sharing best practices. We work together all of the time. Um, we have a good network of state epidemiologists and other epidemiologists and state health officials. So we are constantly working together, learning from what others have are discovering, and we will put those lessons to, to work here. Yeah, it's a great question, and the answer to that is, is yes. And uh, we want to make sure that, that everybody uh, in Virginia that, that needs access has access. Uh, obviously, you know, we've expanded Medicaid. That has helped us to, to allow individuals to go see providers. Uh, there are still uh, others out there that we're having discussions if and, and when we need to make sure that uh, we, we assure access to everybody, we, we will take action on that. So we are working with our health care providers. CDC has guidance on testing. We've shared that with health care providers. And when they have patients that meet those criteria, then we work with them to have the patient tested, patients tested. And the testing that's been done, we have not had any positive cases. In Washington State, they had a positive case very early on. They were the first case in the country. The testing criteria were expanded to look at other areas where there's risk, and also patients who we don't have another diagnosis for and are ill. Got time for about one or two more. You said there are 17 cases that have been tested, 14 negative, three pending. What region are those three pending in? 
That information is on our, will be on our website today. That's probably the easiest way to get the exact information. The terms are not interchangeable. The World Health Organization will actually declare a pandemic if we reach that point. Thank you. Back over one more. Yes. Are you all talking with the schools and having the schools do anything out to about kids and children and so forth? Are you all doing anything with the schools? It's a, it's a great question. And one of the reasons you, you see a lot of white coats who obviously are providers, but you also see our cabinet members. And our Secretary of Education is here, our Secretary of Transportation. Uh, we meet uh, uh, on a weekly basis, and, and yes, so we depend on what uh, secretary and, and what uh, uh, avenue needs to be reached, we're communicating with those individuals. All right, thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank you.